Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, Most High God. Hallelujah to the only wise God, to the Alpha, to the Omega, to the beginning, to the ending, who was, who is, who is to come. Jesus Christ. For your grace is sufficient for all of our needs. Let me just make sure we're completely plugged in here. I think we're okay, guys. We are okay in Jesus' name. Grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all tonight. I'm just so blessed to be back. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Bear with me, guys. We're just still messing with the setup here. Um... We're messing with the camera. We're messing with the hotspot for the Wi-Fi. We're messing with the camera and the setup. And it's just like not uh, <laughs> centered. But you know, it's not about vanity. It's not about what things look like. But it's about the presence of Almighty God, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, Jesus. We welcome you into this video. I thank you, Father God, that you draw souls from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Thank you for holy boldness. We just come against all demonic limitations, demonic restrictions, demonic restrainments in the name of Jesus. By the perfect love of God, we cast out all fear in Jesus' mighty name, all anxiety, all worry, and all heaviness spirits go now in Jesus' mighty name. All infirmity, all witchcraft, depart from us. We bind and cast you out. Go now in Jesus' mighty name. And every spirit mentioned, and every spirit that's evil not mentioned, anything not sent by the Father, we command you out and to leave and to flee right now from the presence of the Lord. You must go in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus drives you out. We banish you back to the pit, and there you remain until the day of judgment. We thank you, Father God, for salvation, deliverance, power in the name of Yahweh, Emmanuel, for God is with us, and we just praise your holy name. We lift up the name of Jesus, and if he's... Be lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. He is drawing all of mankind unto himself. If we lift up the name of Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he is faithful who promised and he is drawing all mankind unto himself. The grace of God offering salvation has appeared to all of mankind. Um, and it's appearing to you right now and, and right here. And uh, we just thank Jesus for all that he's done. He's a good, good father. We welcome you, Father God, and your presence into the atmosphere. We will praise you through the trials. We will praise you through the storm. And we can have joy in our salvation. We can have joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We can have joy bubbling up and running over. Our cup is always never empty. In us right now springs up a well of everlasting life flowing from out of the belly like a river of living water. We shall never run dry. We shall never run empty. Fill us, Lord, fresh outpouring heaven touching earth and the melody of the sound into our ear gates, Father God. Let it touch our hearts in a new way. in the way. In between us and you, remove every demonic restriction. Remove every demonic limitation. There's no more ceiling. Kingdom rule and kingdom reign and the royalty as the royal priesthood. 
trusted that we are because we know the God that we serve. We know who we are and we know whose we are and we know what we've been redeemed from and what we've been redeemed for. That knowledge is a weapon and people are perishing for the lack of knowledge and why is there a lack of knowledge when all of the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God that can come There is freedom in this land, and there is no reason and there is no excuse to be silent in this hour. Jesus is coming, and he's coming quickly, like a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away, and the earth will burn up with a fervent heat, and the night's coming when no man can work, and we don't have to live in regret in that day because we can work the works of he who has called us out of the dark.
resting upon us. A new strength is coming to us that we didn't have last year.
We trust in the name of our God, Yahweh. We trust in the name of our Lord, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. So if God is for us, who can be against us, guys? Who can be against us?
Jesus lives on the inside of you. That same Jesus lives on the inside of me. We are without excuse. We have everything that we need to proclaim the good news to every living creature. We have everything that we need to speak forth the promises of God, which in him are yes and amen. Let every man be a liar, but God is true. And let every man be a liar. Test the spirits to see whether they are of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is the Lord, the anointed one, is not of God, but it's the spirit of the Antichrist. There's a son, there's only one son, there's only one way. No man comes to the Father, but by me, saith the Lord, in accordance with Acts 4.12, for there is no other name given among men, whereby we must be saved. And if you're questionable about that, then I urge you to pray for a revelation and say, Lord, show truth to me. Reveal yourself in a personal way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He is faithful who promised. His word shall not return void. We call heaven and earth this day. But no, as for me, and as for my house, we will serve the Lord. And although it may seem like we're serving, right? When we're serving, when we're worshiping, it's not just singing.
declare freedom. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is deliverance. There is salvation. There is peace. There is love. There is grace. There is joy. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit.
deeper level, deeper than we've ever been before. And we will stand, having done all to stand in this evil day. For the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we will continue steadfastly in this glorious gospel of the King of Kings. <laughs> no matter what comes against us, can't stop us. you allow to rob your peace. But we are not allowing anything to rob our peace any longer. But the Spirit of the Lord is raising up that standard against it. And we will continue in the faith. We will continue in faith in the Son of God who died and gave himself a ransom for us. Open heaven, Lord. Help us to tap into new dimensions and streams of your manifest presence and glory. Give us a supernatural type of endurance, a supernatural type of strength that we are going to need in this last hour, in these last minutes, in these last seconds, in these last days to stand, having done all to stand. Equip us in the helmet of salvation. Equip us in the breastplate of righteousness. Equip us in the belt of truth. Equip us in the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. Equip us with our sandals in the preparation of the gospel of peace. Full armor. In accordance with Ephesians 6.12, let us put on the full armor of God. Who teaches our hands to war. The Lord God Almighty. He teaches our hands to war. suffer the righteous to be moved. You're a good, good father. We stand on your promises. We stand on your word, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We just thank you for the cross. We thank you, Lord, right now that you are filling us with a new empowerment that we didn't come in here with not leave the same, but we want to be changed more and more into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, as the days go by, from abiding and dwelling in your presence. For those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty, we're protected. Lead me to the rock, it is higher than I. We are hidden in Christ, we are protected.
praise you, Lord. Hallelujah.
one another. Help us to let offenses go. Help us to have the power of forgiveness, to let resentments, bitterness, and unforgiveness, let it all go. We lay it at your feet, Lord. Unite us. and 
We worship you, Lord.
come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Checking out your comments. Thank you guys for joining. It's awesome. God's good. <laughs> guys, I have so much more than worship to share. Um, there's so much more than worship. Uh, worship is great. We need worship. We need praise. Um, we need the Lord Jesus Christ. We need a personal relationship. You know, some of that stuff was a little repetitive, but however the Lord lays it on our hearts, let's just come out with it, whatever it may be. Sometimes we need a reminder that He's good. Sometimes we need a reminder that He's with us. Sometimes we just need a little reminder for some encouragement that His Word um, is truth. And so, although we may know it, do we have it hidden in our hearts? That could be two different things. Knowing the Word and having His Word in our heart. So that when the trials come and the storm hits, we have that Word which was hidden in our heart to speak forth out of our mouth at that trial and proclaim His promises even against the situation. When the situation looks opposite from what his word says, if we have his word hidden in our hearts, we can operate it. It's tangible. We can reach down, grab it, and use it as a sword of the spirit. 
against all of these tactics that the enemy is trying. They're not going to work. And we're just going to continue abiding in the love of God. We're going to continue in this um, good news message. We're going to continue encouraging one another, uh, making spiritual songs and melodies in our hearts to the Lord. We're going to continue um, starting our day rejoicing and stating that this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. So he's just living on the inside of each and every one of us. And he loves you so much. He paid a, a brutal price to redeem you. And um, I just come against every single lie that the enemy is coming at you with through people who are close to you, um, through coworkers, through family members, through friends, whoever it may be, through leaders even, whoever it may be. We lay an ax at the root of every lie in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we just say, truth come forth, and the Holy Spirit will lead us, and the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. So thank God for that, that we have the Holy Spirit, that's our comforter, that is truth. There is no truth without the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, guys, there's so much more. <laughs> Never know what to do here. There's so much more. There's always so much more to share on these things and never enough time. But that's why it's good to do these things on the weekend or just... When you don't have something the next day lingering in your mind, when you can just free your mind of all responsibility for a moment in time to just worship, to just praise, to just pray and just be like that song, be still and know that he is God and really tap into new dimensions and new realms and streams of heavenly portals heaven's dimension shining into us and lighting up and illuminating our soul you know he's living inside of us and there's so much chaos in the outside world and the ways of this world is so oppositional to the ways of God and so we just have to seriously keep ourselves filled every single day with his word we have to seriously be in a relationship with jesus christ stronger than we've ever been in before we really are living in evil days we really are living in evil times we are really living in the last days which the scripture warns us about and that's why it's even more important to have the word every single day like we have our breakfast like we have our lunch like we have our dinner and not neglect spiritual nourishment that's a detriment to our spiritual well-being to do so and we can't afford uh, for that to happen. We have been given all opportunity to study and to show ourselves approved. We have been given all opportunity to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that all these other things that we're in need of uh, will be added to us and we don't have to worry about all those other things that we need because they will just simply be added to us. And so we should gather like we're gathering right now more and more and more as the days go by even more as we see the day of the lord jesus christ approaching because he is coming back soon and he is coming quickly every eye is going to see him even those which pierced him and so we just have to stay united we have to continue in all things that are good we have to continue spreading the message of hope to people that are hopeless to a lost and sick and broken and dying world and we are going to be confronted with trials we are going to be confronted with opposition um, the word never says that it's going to be easy it just says that with god all things are possible it says that with you know Christ, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't see anywhere in there um, something saying that life is going to be easy or that there's never going to be any trials that come. In fact, 
it prepares us and it warns us in advance to stand firm when those things happen. So we don't have to be so shocked and seemingly surprised when the trials hit. Yes, it's getting crazier as the days go by, but we don't have to allow worry and and fatigue and depression and oppression or a spirit of heaviness to come upon us. But let us lay aside the weight and the sins which so easily beset us. And yes, it can be a sin to be living in anxiety. It's a sin to be living in fear. It's a sin to be living in anxiety. It's a sin to be living in worry. It's a sin to be living in depression. It's a sin to be living in oppression. It's a sin to be living in heaviness because God has given us every tool to fight it um, with the fighting of the good fight of faith. And he does that by the power of his grace, by his undeserved favor, by God's loving kindness towards us. He's equipped us with the tools to fight these demonic spirits that are trying to attack your mind, your heart, your soul, your body, your spiritual well-being, your family members, your friends, your co-workers, whatever it is. So we have to recognize what's happening at the onset and pluck it up by its root before that thing grows into an entire tree and manifests demonic fruit in our lives. So it's super important to just stay encouraged. It's just super important to um, do whatever it is that you feel the Holy Spirit is leading and prompting you to do in this hour. We will feel a nudge. We will feel an urgency. We will feel a yearning for. We will feel a direction in which the Holy Spirit is guiding us in. And so that's just how it's going to be. There's a lot of things happening right now. Bear with seeing where we're at here. There's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of things happening, and they're happening quickly. They're happening in a succession, a one by one by one. Prophecies are being fulfilled more and more every single day. We are definitely living in the last days. And um, some people don't believe that, uh, but I sincerely plead with you to check out the scriptures and to pray about it and to ask God for a revelation in regards to that subject if you don't feel like that's the times we're living in. But not to dwell or to fret on that, but that fact sh could make us even more zealous for the things of God. Knowing that he's coming soon makes us more passionate and makes us just want to serve him more and makes us want to do the things that he's calling us to even more than we did yesterday and more than we did the day before. As the days go by, there's an acceleration. We are in an accelerated increase season. So everything that's happening, it's happening quickly and it's happening at an accelerated speed. Unlike ever before, people are being raised by the hand of the Lord and excelling and accelerating and being promoted by the hand of the Lord God Almighty alone. And we're seeing it before our eyes and other people are falling away and they're falling quickly and they're falling fast. And that's a scary thing. This is the great falling away. The scripture talks about the great falling away. So we can't allow these trials that we're going through to knock us out of the race. Uh, he is faithful to complete the good work that he started in us. So we really don't have an excuse to sit on the sidelines and just to watch everything unfold. But why not be part of this? Because that's what we're called as more than conquerors. We're already part of this. We've already engaged ourselves in, um, in a... It's a fixed fight, but we've already engaged ourselves in the warfare that, that comes along with being a child of God by saying yes to Jesus. So we might as well allow him to have his way from the inside out completely in entirety because he is faithful to complete that work. And if he started that work in you, he will finish it if we allow him to have his way fully, full surrender, 
every area. Am I saying that I'm perfect or that I have what I'm speaking about mastered? Absolutely not. There's only one master and that's Jesus. I'm just here to spread the message of hope and good news and encouragement. And I believe that's what he's called me to do. So I am going to be faithful to say yes and throw my pride and ego and any other thing on the line and just put myself out there in this kind of manner, in this kind of way and make it so that <laughs> the Holy Spirit's got to show up uh, because there's no other way. There's no other way. Half the time I don't even know like what I'm going to sing or what I'm even going to say. He just says, go live. <laughs> I'll give you the words. I'll give you a new song. I'll give you a new melody. And, you know, it's just about, it's about being spontaneous. You know, I believe that God is looking for a people who are not filled with um, ego or pride who are willing to lay that on the side and um, flow in in the anointing of God and in the gifts that God's called them and just allow the Holy Spirit to move in a new way and that means being extremely uncomfortable at times <laughs> and that's a good thing our uncomfortability allows more room for the comforter to get in there and and to move so it's just an exciting time and it's a really important time to just listen for his voice you know his sheep hear his voice and they're not going to follow another we're not going to follow another when we hear his voice we know his voice we know his voice so clearly we're we will know the voice of a stranger and we know the truth and it's the truth that we know that makes us free so he's just got to be our supreme authority this season. We have to allow Jesus's lordship, really true lordship over every area of our lives so that he can cleanse this vessel and, and use it for his glory, for whatever he's created us for. Each and every single one of you, each and every one of us has a mission, has a purpose, has a destiny, has a plan in which God has created us for. So to submit to God and, and resist the devil, the devil flees from us and we begin walking in our calling in the purpose and plans that God has purposed for us since before the foundations of the world was even framed. So I don't even know, guys. I'm just going uh, on a whim here. I'm just completely winging it uh, as usual. But whatever he wants to do, it's cool to just be open and say, okay, <laughs> and just get on here. Trust me, there's been other times I definitely wanted to come on here. And, you know, I do apologize that it's been a while. There's reasons for that. Um, but, you know, I really got to tell you guys honestly that there's no reason to um, try to force something or push something if it's not happening. If God it, himself is not saying, I have a message or I'm giving you a message to give to the people or a new song in your spirit to share with the public. If he's not making that known, then I really believe that we shouldn't be going live. Um, I really believe that it should be something that the Holy Spirit um, speaks and that we should be ministered to directly and personally by the Holy Spirit. And then we are given a message to deliver to the people. So what good is um, being in ministry um, as a minister to serve the community and to give out um, a message if that message wasn't given straight from the source. It's like getting a one-sided story or watching a news channel that's tainted. We want it straight from the source. We want that message to be straight from the source. We want that message to be raw, to be straight up, to be truth, and to be straight from the source, from the master's mouth straight to our ears, right? So we really want to be careful about just going live um, all the time 
if it's not something that's Holy Spirit inspired. So there's seasons, you know, the scripture talks about be, there's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. There's times of pouring out and there's times of refreshing and being poured into that comes in the presence of the Lord. And sometimes there's a little bit of both going on. When you're pouring out, he's refilling you at the same time. There's all different moments and different seasons and that's why it's super important to just have um, discernment and to know what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us personally in each moment. So that's why it's super important in the times we're living to keep that relationship with Jesus strong and to keep the center of that relationship hot and on fire and on fire with, with his love for us and just allowing ourselves to be loved on by him. And I really do he believe he wants to reveal himself in such a powerful way. So it's exciting. And there's a lot of trials going on. There's a lot of, a lot of things that people need encouragement for. There's a lot of things that people are believing God for. Bear with me, guys. Okay, I just want to shut that off. There's a lot of things going on right now, but we don't have to allow everything that's going on to cause a spirit of fear to invade our lives. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live in worry. We don't have to live in oppression or depression and all of these things that are trying to creep their way into our lives. We don't have to allow it and we don't have to open a door to those things, but we can declare God's promises from his word over our lives every single day as we're going through whatever it is that we're going through and just have peace on the inside even if the external environment is the exact opposite of everything that's in the word so we're going to be tested we're going to be tried we are going through refining fire it's like putting like coffee grinds into a filter right and the water flows through that filter we are being filtered out. All of the impurities are being filtered out of us through these trials and through this refining fire. And um, God loves us. And we just have to remember that he's a good, good father and, and that he loves us and that he has good plans for our lives. Even if we're feeling um, in despair or we're feeling hopeless at times, it's why we got to go back to the word to gain encouragement. And um, it's just important to stir up the gift of God that's inside of us. He's given us by the power of his grace the ability to become empowered by stirring up the gift on the inside of us when things on the outside of us are getting crazy. He will put in remembrance the things which he's spoken to us and he will remind us that we are victorious in Christ. He will remind us of how to use the tools and the weapons uh, that we were created to fight this good fight with. So if we just continue in whatever it is he's speaking in each moment and just really listen and tune in to what the Holy Spirit's saying, then we will be in a way safer and better place if we just abide in his love. And that's just staying in a relationship, in a strong relationship, a loving relationship with him. I really believe that's what he wants is to have that loving relationship that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that whosoever would believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And because he sent his son to die on the cross for us, it's for that relationship to exist between us and God. And so, oh wow, it's been a very interesting week talking about trials and stuff like that. I'm telling you guys, my faith was definitely tested, definitely tried about a week ago. And I was in a situation, I was in a situation where I had to either, I had to rely 
it's always good to have the medical community, right? And we bless and we honor the medical community and doctors and medical professionals that God has placed on this earth to work through, to help people that are suffering and having sickness and having things going on that require medical intervention. Uh, but I was placed in a situation where it was going to be fear versus faith. And I was either going to rely on the medical community over Jesus or I was going to rely on Jesus over the medical community. Although the medical community was help, helping, was used to help me in that situation, it was fear versus faith, basically. I was having like really crazy stomach problems really bad pain out of nowhere. I mean, it felt like somebody was punching me in the stomach. It felt like, it felt like something trying to punch its way out of my stomach. It was like something deep inside, really bad pains. I mean, I'm talking about laid out, couldn't do anything, couldn't move, couldn't talk. It was just such a painful experience. And it's a personal experience, so that's why I wasn't sure if I was going to share it. But I really do believe that God allows us in our trials to really seek him and we gain revelation from all that we've been through and I believe that it's using wisdom to share certain things if it's going to be used to edify and to encourage and to build up the body of Christ so in that moment it was fear versus faith I went and I actually saw three doctors in three days because the pain was just so excruciating that I didn't know what to do and I prayed at night and God had me open to a scripture to not put your trust in man and to put your trust in the Lord and to just trust that it's in his hands and that you're going to live through this. You're not going to die. You're going to live through this. Everything's going to be okay. And to stop trusting in man and seeking out man for the answers when things are happening with seek me said the Lord when I opened to the scripture and it was in the middle of the night and I was just trying to understand what was happening so I laid there in the hospital room and I had to go for a cat scan to look inside to see what was going on where was this pain going coming from and so I'm just laying there. This is the weirdest thing. I turn on the TV in the hospital and on the TV, <laughs> you really can't make this stuff up, on the TV screen in the hospital was this channel where there was a mannequin type figure and it was clear, like see-through. You could see through it, it was clear, and it was a mannequin of a torso it's the craziest thing. Out of all things that could have been playing on the TV, it was like a clear mannequin on the TV of a torso, and a man was holding a knife, and he was stabbing the torso with the knife, and fake blood was coming out everywhere. And I'm sitting there watching this as I'm waiting to get a CAT scan of my stomach because I'm having like stabbing type of pains in my stomach. Out of all things that could be on the TV, it was like an exact replica of my situation on the TV in front of me. And I'm thinking, okay, what are you trying to tell me, Lord? So then my father comes to visit and he was by my bedside and he was playing a song that the band that he's in um, had just played over the weekend. And the name of the song is Living on a Prayer. So if that's not warfare, I don't know what is. It was like God was revealing to me what was happening. This is your situation right now. You're having these um, demonic, you're having a demonic attack right now against your physical body. It's sent by the enemy. It's a spiritual attack. You're in spiritual warfare right now. And God's saying, live, 
with the song Living on a Prayer to trust in the Lord through the situation and to use the sword of the spirit against this attack right now and to speak with the word of faith, the word of God against what's happening and to believe the words being spoken is greater in reality and in power and in strength than the actual situation that's happening. So I began to pray. I began to pray. And so by the third day, I finally got medication to help the situation, right? Because even after coming out of the hospital, the pain returned. It was still the same as before I went in there. Never got treated while I was, I felt like I never got, I felt like I never got proper treatment. Like while I was in there, like nothing, just kind of, I got an evaluation as to what was going on and an explanation um, about what was going on because, from the CAT scan. But the pain was still there. It was just as bad as it was two days prior. So I went to, I yet went to another doctor after coming out of the hospital on the third day. Three doctors, three days. And by the time I finally got to the third doctor who gave me medication to treat the symptoms of what was going on, by the time I got to the pharmacy, it's the craziest thing, their power went out. This, their computer system went out. And God's like still saying that same message that he gave me the night before in the word, don't trust in man, but put your trust in me through this. I want you to trust in me through this over your trust in man. Am I saying don't go to the doctor? Am I saying don't seek medical help when you have a physical situation going on? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just using my own personal experience and sharing it with you. Um, because I believe that this whole thing happened to be given a message uh, to spread to other people with through what happened in my life last week. So through all that, when I finally um, waited around for a little while, I, I said, I can't, I can't wait here any longer. The system was down. Uh, so at the pharmacy, the system was down for a long time. So I decided to go like, Christmas shopping and look around. And I'm waiting for about half an hour or so maybe 40 minutes, looking around. The system is still down. I decided to leave there, and I went to like get um, a fruit shake at McDonald's down the block. So I go to McDonald's. They didn't have the fruit shake that I was looking for, so and then I went all the way down the road to the other McDonald's. I got two large fruit shakes because that was about all I was able to um, put in me was liquids at the time. And just sat there in the parking lot waiting, 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 waiting for uh, Walgreens to open back up with their system. It never opened back up. It took like forever. So then I ended up calling my father and visiting him and, and spending some time with him and listening to the word of God and praying with him and getting into the things of the spirit over there at his house. But the whole revelation from that experience because after I began to lean more on the Lord instead of being in that state of fear and allowing panic to settle in and running to doctor after doctor after doctor to the pharmacy and this and that all of these problems one after another after another it like just wasn't it seemed like it just was never going to end it felt like when i began to take my shift and focus off of seeking you know the medical route and place that same effort in running to Jesus as the great physician, the symptoms subsided and I still to this day have not picked up the medication from the pharmacy even though their system is now running. Uh, because I believe that the Lord has healed me and I believe in his healing power and I believe in faith in the Lord. 
So I'm not saying don't go to medical professionals. And the reason I posted that post on Facebook the other day, I was just saying, I was just asking a question. Like, do we rely more on doctors than the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why I put that post. And I wasn't trying to be a hypocrite at all. I was posting it because I challenge myself sometimes with these posts. And sometimes these, impo these posts are actually to encourage myself along with the body of Christ as well. So it's just all from experience and the things that are going on. Please don't take it personal. Um, I really am grateful to the medical community. I'm, like I said before, I'm super grateful for medical professionals and doctors that God has placed in the land to help us when we are in a time of great need. But I really believe that that trial happened in my life um, for me to allow God to be the great physician that he truly is, to show me personally that I can trust in him for my health and for all of my needs, because I guess I had a tendency of responding it in a way that's the natural way. I gotta. I I should run to the hospital. I should run to the doctor. I need to run to a man who is trained in medical profession because I need help. And I just wanted the symptoms to go away as quickly as possible because they were really severe. And I just didn't. Um, I was being. I was weak in the faith in that moment in such a way that I wasn't standing on the word and I wasn't utilizing the sword of the spirit as much as I knew that I could. So that was challenged. That area was challenged. That area of faith over fear was challenged. And when I finally began to stand on the word and to speak it and to use it as a weapon proactively against that attack, on my body, I was healed. And Jesus is Jehovah Rapha. He's the great physician. So he's all that we need him to be in our time of need if we just open up and allow him to be. I'm being super transparent on here right now. And like I said, I didn't know if I really wanted to dig that deep and disclose such personal information. But honestly, guys, my life is a an open book. But at the same time, I'm not going to give any place to the devil. So none of that stuff's ever going to work. We just need to stand in faith. We need to proclaim the word of the Lord over our situation and just speak his word as a sword of the spirit over our situations and all the things that we may preach to other people about we could definitely be tested in those areas um there's definitely areas of you know we all have different areas of vulnerability or so-called weakness that when we're weak we need the lord's strength to come through that area and that's the only way we're going to be able to overcome in that area is allowing that vulnerability and weakness to be taken over by the Lord's power through us and that area will be strengthened by him because we can't do this in our own strength but if we allow him to be all that he really truly is he'll, he'll show up in ways we'd never even expected before I mean the second that medication was finally available I had been healed and that was that because I took my shift I took my focus off I took my shift and focus off of anything that I had allowed to become an idol and I put it um, onto back onto the Lord Jesus Christ so we never have to allow our focus to even be shifted off of Jesus Christ it's just that here in America, where I'm living, it's very common for people to respond that way. It's just how we respond. But there are countries that they don't have um, they don't have medical they don't have people that are in the medical field so equipped to just be on the scene in a moment's time 
when they're suffering like that. But here in America, we just like tend to run to the doctor for everything. But I really don't see that anywhere in the scripture. In fact, every scripture that talks about a sick person getting well, it's by the hand of the Lord. And I wasn't trying to offend anybody on purpose by posting, um, you know, about allowing medicine to become idolatry or anything in the medical field over Jesus Christ and faith in Jesus Christ to become idolatry. But it's the truth. It's the truth that some of us have allowed um, medicine and doctors to take the place of Jesus being the great physician and then we are not allowing God to move in that area in our life the way that he wants to show up so I'm not against it at all I'm just asking um, that if anybody can find a scripture that says let all people who are sick run to the doctor, then please show me where that is in the Bible. I really would um, be interested in knowing. But that's not what I'm seeing when I'm searching. That's not what I'm seeing when I'm looking into scripture. I'm seeing let all who are sick run to the Lord and that by his stripes we were healed. And that Jesus healed all manner of sickness and disease. And we see many situations in the word where a sick person was made well by the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in him alone, including the woman with the blood disorder for 12 years who had spent all of her money on physicians and she, her condition kept getting worse and worse and worse. And she saw Jesus and she pushed past the crowd and she touched his garment by faith and he felt virtue healing power flowing out of him and he said who touched me and she said I knew if I touched you I would be made whole by faith we got to reach up and touch his garment and allow his healing virtue power to flow into our lives into our body into our mind into our spirit and to be made whole but if we don't allow God to have his rightful place as great physician then we're shutting the door to the allowance of him being able to show up in that area the way that he wants to manifest himself that's all I'm saying but I'm not against I'm not against going to doctors I'm not against the medical community I'm not against hospitals or anything like that I think that it was a personal test of faith that I personally needed to experience and maybe other people don't respond that way and they maybe they're stronger in faith in that area than me and that's why I was going through that trial personally so I could be able to share it with you guys everybody responds differently in different circumstances and has different views on different things but I really do believe that all of the answers to life's questions are in the Word of God in the Holy Bible so God's good and he's the ultimate healer and he will show up in ways that we've never expected and he's able to do exceedingly above all we can ask or think or hope for and he's just amazing so I really hope that this encourages some people and you know there's just so much going on right now but to stand on the word the word is the weapon. We're going to have to. We're going to have to. There's going to be moments where we will have to not only stand on the word, but speak it into the atmosphere. Speak it in the situation of the trial. Speak it against the demonic attacks of the enemy that's trying to attack your mind, your heart, your soul, your physical body. And it'll feel so real because it is real. I'm not denying that the attacks 
don't come with symptoms because they do and it it's real and it's happening to you and if we allow it a spirit of fear can gain access through an open door if we get ourselves into a state of worry so we cannot allow worry to have any place we cannot allow fear to have any place but we have to bind and cast it out at the onset at the moment it tries to come in through that open door of fear we have to recognize it bind it cast it out and replace it with the word of God and believe the word and speak the word and that's just what we got to do hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord I'm reading your comment Lisa your back gets attacked yeah so we just come against that in Jesus name Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your healing virtue flowing into Lisa's back. In Jesus' mighty name, we just command every infirmity spirit to go now, right now. We expose any open doors that it may have come in through. Let it be revealed to her. And thank you that you are just filling her, Holy Spirit, completely till she overflows. Everything that's not sent by Father God, we just command you. To cease and desist in operation right now. We bind you. We cast you out. Infirmity, come out now. We banish you back to the pit. You remain there to the day of judgment. In Jesus' mighty name, holy refining fire all over this body. Healed. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so <laughs> just kind of going on and on, guys. But had to get that out there. Like I said, I'm being super transparent with you about everything that happened this past week. And, you know, it was just an experience. So God wants to be our all in all. And um, if we allow him to, then he's going to show up in new ways. Um, I know he has many titles. I am that I am, he says. I am that I am. I'm what you need me to be when you need me to be it. So we just got to trust and have faith that he is that he is. I am that I am. And that's really enough said. Thank you, Jesus, for everybody on here. And keep going strong. There will be more videos to come. Please stay posted for my special brother in the Lord's testimony, Evangelist Paulson. I'm really excited about it. Hopefully you guys are excited about sharing his testimony very, very soon in the near future. So as the Spirit of God leads, I'm hoping that the Lord will allow these videos to continue now that we are back in action. So please stay posted for Evangelist Paulson's testimony. It's going to be really Thank you, Jesus. See you guys soon. Have a blessed night. Love you all. Let's, I'll pray for you guys. Please pray for me. And amen.